So, few more points. Now, the calculations we have done, we have considered only the thermal noise power, but even for flicker noise, the procedure is identical. Okay, just that in the pass spectral density, you add the pass spectral density for the flicker noise. That's all. And the flicker noise pass spectral density, as you know, is inversely proportional to the frequency, and is also proportion inversely proportional to the area. Okay. So let us say you have designed some amplifier and you find that it has some noise due to flicker noise. If you want to reduce the effect of it, what is the brute force way in which you can reduce it? You increase the area. Okay. So we increase the area, the flicker noise also reduces. Now, do you know something else which will reduce if you uh, reduce if you increase the area? Effect of mismatch or the offset, right? Even the effect of mismatch, we saw all the standard deviations were inversely proportional to root time cell. So, if you increase the area again, the effect of mismatch, or in the case of amplifiers, the DC offset will also reduce. Okay, and this should not be again surprising. Because flicker noise basically has a very high energy around DC, right? So if you try to reduce the DC offset, even the effect of flicker noise will also reduce. Right? DC offset is basically you are trying to reduce the DC portion. Okay. So if you reduce it, even the flicker noise also will reduce. And there are, as I mentioned, this is not a fundamental noise. So there are circuit techniques to uh, reduce it to a lot and any technique you have to reduce the effect of uh, offset will also reduce flicker noise. So we will not look at those techniques in this course, but just correct, correct. No, this is basically very low frequencies, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what this will be there. Yes, correct. We can't ignore this. But what I'm getting at is, at low frequencies, this this is going to be dominant. But there are circuit techniques in by using which you can actually eliminate it to a lot. I mean, eliminate this effect of the flicker noise to a large extent. Okay. But we'll not go into that. But uh, the same is not the case with thermal noise. So if you have some particular thermal noise, that is a fact of life, you'll have to live with it. Okay. There is no circuit technique as such using which you can reduce its effect because it's fundamental. But let us say you design some amplifier and say it has uh, some thermal noise power. But let us say you want to reduce the thermal noise by a factor of 2. But you obviously want to do this without affecting your DC gain and all the transfer functions, right? And there are systematic ways in which you can do it. So I'll uh, explain one such way. And to understand this, let's take a simplistic case. Say have a simple MOSFET like this, okay? Say biased with the ideal current source. So in small signal, we'll ha not have this guy. We'll have the intrinsic output resistance R not of this. So the gain of this is what small signal gain. It's minus gm R not. And what is the input referred noise for this guy? 4 kT gamma by gm. Okay. Now I find that this noise is not enough for me. I want to reduce it by a factor of two. What is the way in which you can reduce it? I want to reduce noise by 2x. I will have to increase gm, that is the only thing. Okay. Right? And as you know, there are a couple of ways in which you can increase gm. One is, of course, you can keep the uh, drain current constant. Right? See, if the drain current is constant, what is the expression for gm? Huh? Yeah, square root of 2 ID times 
some new C ox W by L, right? So in this case, how will you reduce? How will you increase GM? Yeah, basically, let's say if length is fixed, you increase W by 4x, right? If I do that, GM is increasing by factor of two. Current is constant. The current is constant. What can you say about uh, R not of the transistor? R not is constant. So what can you say about the gain? Gain increases, right? But that's not what you want. You want to keep circuit performance the same, right? So this is not the uh, right way. So let's try the other way. So here I'll just say that uh, A not increases. So the other way is to keep the uh, VGS minus VTH constant. If the gate to source voltage is constant, what is the expression for GM? Fine. So now how will I increase GM? I will have to increase W by factor of 2. Right? So then what can you say about the current? 2x. I am keeping gate to source voltage same. I am increasing W. Current will increase. Fine? So what can you say about the R0? Decrease by factor of 2. Okay. So what can you say about the DC gain here? It will be same. So looks like this is the uh, reasonable way in which you can go about scaling the circuit, right? So what you have to do is uh, increase the width of the transistor by a factor of two, and you can imagine it like this. You can say that we have two identical transistors with the width W. I am going and connecting them node by node like this. This is basically one way in which you can have a transistor with twice the width. Isn't it? Is it okay or? Yeah. I mean, so here the current is what? Let's say it's ID and ID. The total current is 2ID. Right? <coughs> Everything doubles here. The gate to source voltage is same for this. Okay. So, uh, in general, you can extend it for any circuit. So, let's say I have some circuit here. So let's say this is my it can be single ended differential whatever it doesn't matter. I'll just take single ended case for simplicity. B I V naught. Let's say it has lots of internal nodes. So I can take the identical copy of the circuit. Right? If I apply V I I'll get the same output V naught. And all the internal nodes will be at the same voltage in the two circuits. Right? So I can actually go and connect them node by node like this. Okay. Again, they are at the identical, they are at the same potential. I connect them, nothing will change in the circuit. So it is as though you have taken the circuit and scaled it by factor of two. Right? Is that okay? And if you do this, what you'll find is that none of the voltages change because to start with, all the potentials were identical. By shorting them, I am not changing the voltages. Transfer function doesn't change. But having uh, two, uh, two elements in parallel will make sure that the noise per spectral density will reduce by factor of 2. Okay. And uh, what this means, let us say if you have a resistor in the network, I will put say two of them in parallel. So we have a resistor R that becomes R by 2. So if you have an inductance L, if I put two of them in parallel, L by 2, C will become 2 times C. And if I have some trans connectance, it becomes 2 times C trans connectance. Okay. And in general, I don't have to stop with a factor of 2. This factor can be arbitrary. That is, I can take some network, I can scale the network by any factor K0. This can be a non-integer also. Uh, by scaling, what I mean is I take the resistances in the network, change it to R by K0, all the inductances will become L by K0, capacitances will become C times K0, GMs will become GM times K0. 
so all the elements in the network you scale it like this if you do that nothing will change with respect to the transfer function dc gain everything will be same but the noise psd will reduce okay and here voltages will be same so let us say uh, this virtual circuit was consuming a power p not what can you say about the power consumed in this no no huh sorry k not times p not i mean the simplest way to think is i putting k not i mean if, if let's say k not is 2 right what i'm saying is i'm taking two identical networks and putting them in parallel like this right if the individual network is carrying was consuming a power p not this composite network take two p not and in general it's two for any value k not okay so this is one way in which uh, you can scale the network so here the power also increases by k not so you find that you have designed some circuit or a system with some uh, particular transfer function and then you find that the noise power spectral density is higher if you want to reduce it one brute force way is to uh, scale all the elements in the network okay and a uh, few more minutes i'll take see this can go the other side also that is let's say you have designed a network you find that the network is consuming uh, higher power let's say it, con it consumes twice the power that you wanted what you can do to reduce the power i can take the resistance and make it twice that is i'll choose k not to be one half here okay so i do k not to be one half here the power basically reduces by factor of 2 right so i'll take all the resistance and make it to r inductance will become twice c will become c by 2 gm will become g by 2 so in this way you will find that the power reduces by factor of 2 but the noise will increase by factor of 2 so it can go either ways and uh, this is called uh, noise or impedance scaling okay fine so just one last thing couple of minutes <coughs> then we are in the topic of scaling <coughs> so let's say i again have a case where i have designed some circuit so it has some transfer function okay with some bandwidth f not now let us say i want to uh, make the circuit so that the bandwidth is scaled nothing else should change just the bandwidth will become by factor of 2 or it can also increase depending on your uh, case so let's see how we can do that again i'll just intuitively explain if you think about it all the bandwidths they are either of the form 1 by rc right or say some gm by c or r by l finally bandwidth is of this form right so from this can you tell me how can you scale the bandwidth if you want to reduce the bandwidth by factor of 2 what do you think we can do double double what yeah basically one thing i can do is i can increase r gm will become gm by 2 or i can take the inductance and capacitance and make it 2x sorry it's not right it like this i'll write it clearly yeah correct l and c become 2x okay either of them will work let me just quickly say what will be the issues with either of these cases see here if i uh, make scale the resistances and trans conductances alone what can you say about the noise psd it will become two times because all our noise psds were of the form 4ktr or 4kt gamma by gm right so this will become 2x right so if i earlier had uh, Power spectral density looking like this. Now it will basically be twice. Sorry, I will not show this. The low frequency PST will be twice. But what happened to the bandwidth? 
bandwidth has reduced by a factor of 2 that's the whole point do this right so what can you say about the total noise power it will remain the same right i have increased the noise per spectral density but i have shrunk the bandwidth by the same factor so at least makes sense that the noise power should be same but here if i do this that is if i increase only the inductances and capacitances what can you say about the low frequency per spectral density it is being the same i am not changing the resistances so earlier if it was like this now the low frequency per spectral density is same but what about the bandwidth half so what can you say about the mean square noise it is lower by factor okay and this sh again should be surprising because if i uh, reduce all the resistances so increase the resistances and decrease transconductances what can you say about the power increase or decrease it will decrease by factor of 2 i mean gm is reducing by factor of 2 so it at least makes sense that i should have smaller current if the resistance is larger also current is basically some v by r right increase resistance current will also reduce by factor of 2 so power reduces to x what can you say about the power here same same right so here you see that i am uh, consuming smaller power here and that is why compared to this guy the noise power is also higher in this case right i mean basically the, uh, this guy is consuming larger power right because the power here has reduced the right side case the power consumed is higher so even the noise power will be low okay so again nothing is coming for free it's all a trade off the ultimate trade off is if you want to reduce noise simplest thing is to burn more power okay and this is called uh, frequency scale okay so yeah i'll stop here i think i exceeded time